In this video, we're going to take a look at propagated and relative error in differentials. So I'm going to assume that you have watched video 3.9.1. If you have not, please go back and watch that before you watch this video. Otherwise, finding error with differentials won't make sense if you don't know how to find differentials. So in our last video, we used a function of y equals radical x. And we said within a neighborhood of delta x, which was the same as dx of 0.1, at the x value of 4. And we went through the whole example showing us the actual function values. f of 4 is 2, f of 4.1 is 2.0248, etc. And what we can say then is that the measurement error is within 0.1, but that the propagated error would be the difference between those. So the actual, this is going to get a little confusing, the actual propagated error would be taking 2.0248456732 minus 2. That's the propagated error. So our propagated error is 0 0.0248 four, five, six, seven, three. That's the actual propagated error. If I want to know what the estimated propagated error, estimated propagated error, just like in our last video, is using the values of the tangent line. So the estimated propagated error, so you'll get a question that says, estimate the propagated error. Well, that's what you're going to do. So you're not going to have to do anything like this. You're going to take the values of the tangent line. Now remember, in our last video, I, we didn't find the equation of the tangent line together. I just gave you the values, but I would take 2.025 minus 2 to get 0 0.025. And we said, well, that is pretty darn close to this propagated error. So this is the actual propagated error, but we're estimating it by 0 0.025. Now, we also want to talk about how to find relative error, and then we'll do an example that we haven't done before so that you can understand the actual steps you would have to do. So the relative error would be dy over y, where dy is obviously the differential of y. So in our example, we were using radical x. So dy, if you'll recall, the original function was x to the 1 half. So dy was 1 half x to the negative 1 half dx. And we simplified that by saying it was 1 over 2 radical x dx. So that's dy. So that's what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write 1 over 2 radical x dx in my numerator. And in my denominator, I'm just going to put radical x. And now I'm going to simplify this. So let's simplify. If I have 1 over 2 radical x and I'm dividing by radical x, it's like multiplying by, oops, don't forget the dx. I'll just stick them on top here. It's like multiplying by 1 over radical x. So really what I have is dx over 2 times radical x times radical x or 2x because radical x squared square root is x. Now that I've simplified, let's plug in my values. What is dx? 0 0.1 dx. What is 2x? 2 times x value of 4. What is 0.1 divided by 8? 0 0.025. That is my relative error. So let's do a practice all the way through. We're not going to find the actual propagated error. We're going to estimate the propagated error and relative error. So we're going to estimate it using the differential, just as we talked about before. So how do I get started? Well, we've got the radius of a ball bearing, and a ball bearing is essentially a sphere. So I need to know how to find the volume of a sphere. So if you don't recall, get your textbook out or start Googling. We have 4 thirds pi r cubed. So how am I going to find this? I'm going to take 
delta V is approximately equal to DV and DV is the differential of this function. So 4 thirds pi r cubed, I would um, differentiate that function to get 4 thirds times 3, so that's 4 pi r squared and then dr because I'm differentiating with respect to r. And now what? Well, again, this is the exact value, so now I'm going to take 4 times pi times r, so the radius is measured to be 0.7, so that's r, and the measurement is correct within 0 0.01 inch, so that is the change in r, or dr, or delta r, which are all the same. And I'm going to recall that this is actually plus or minus because it's within 0 0.01 inch on either side. So this is actually a plus or minus, and yes, that's important, 0 0.06158 inches cubed, cubic inches. Now, why is it cubic inches? Again, because it's volume, and volume is measured in cubic inches. So this is the estimate of the propagated error. It's not the actual propagated error because, of course, that would mean I would have to find with the actual function. So this is just the estimate, which was a lot easier than doing it the other way. Now, if I then want to find the relative error, the relative error is going to be dv over v. But instead of taking 0 0.06158 and then finding the volume and dividing them, I'm going to use my math brain a little bit better than that. So I'm going to take dv, which was 4 pi r squared dr, and then the function or formula for volume, which was 4 thirds pi r cubed, and I'm just going to reduce what I can. So this is 4 divided by 4 thirds, which is going to give me essentially a 3 in my numerator. The pi's will cancel. The r squared on top will cancel, and I'll leave an r on the bottom, and then I have dr left on the top. So it's 3 dr divided by r. And now I'm going to plug in 0, sorry, plus or minus 0 0.01 and divide it by r r being 0 0.7 inches. And when I um, divide that, I get zero plus or minus 0 0.0429, and that is the relative error. So relative with respect to you know, the entire um, value. And if you, they wanted you to write it as a percent, obviously I could write it as about 4.3%. Up next, we get to move on to integration. In integration, essentially we're moving backwards from derivatives. So we're finding the opposite of a derivative.